the second one is from quantity to quality. It follows directly from that. For something to stand out, it has to have quality. Uh, it has to actually be better, because otherwise it, it doesn't stand out. So how do we measure what's better? Well, online, that's done by algorithms. Uh, and my, my old world is YouTube, so I'll give you an example here. Uh, back in, in 2006 and 7, when, well, 6, when YouTube was first acquired, but, but in this case, I started in 2008. YouTube was pretty simple, pretty stupid, to be honest. It looked at how many views a video had, and it, it basically used that to determine if you should see that video. That means that a lot of people made a lot of thumbnails with some very hot women or men uh, that a lot of people clicked on. Um, and so YouTube first decided that you couldn't decide your own thumbnail anymore, and then they realized that that wasn't enough. And so they started looking at what I call engagement algorithms. And if you look at YouTube today, there's some more material on this. Um, it basically, YouTube look at a whole range of factors to figure out what you should see. But the, the one and, and one factor to rule them all is engagement, is how much time do you spend with a channel when I introduce you to that channel? So if you look at some of the popular gaming channels now that dominate YouTube, uh, you'll find that their average viewing time is 20 to 25 minutes. Now, as a brand, to compete with that, we're in a completely different world. Even for a stand-up comedian, to draw someone for 25 minutes is very, very difficult. So the types of content that are beginning to rule YouTube are the types of content and channels where people spend a lot of time. It's, it's engagement algorithms rather than quantitative algorithms, or kind of quality algorithms rather than quantitative algorithms. So it's things like how many times are they getting shared? Are, are people subscribing to the channel? Are, are people watching the video to the end? These are all factors that YouTube look at today. Um, and actually, Google is similar, because Google's not stupid. Google wants to be a reflection of what we want to find. Google is, is, the, is the most consumer-centric company, perhaps, with Amazon close behind, that we know. And if you look at YouTube search today, especially after what was known as the Panda update, uh, Google looks very much at quality, too. Um, I, I've chatted to a lot of search marketeers, and they would say that bounce rate and dwell time are the two most important factors today. If you, can, if you can make sure that people don't bounce from a search term and that they spend a lot of time on your site when they click, Google will look at that and they will rank you higher. So, so this whole old quantitative game of we need to have lots of backlinks to our website and whatever, yes, Google still looks at that, but that's not what's going to determine if you rank first, not alone. Um, and I think a lot of people are still stuck in that world. Um, so, so a lot of, of sort of experts in SEO you talk to now, they say, well, the best way to get there is just to make quality content. So actually, it's very interesting that Google first sort of made sure that there was a lot more quantity, and now they're rolling it all back again and actually looking at quality. Uh, I think it's one of the most significant changes in the internet history that most people aren't aware of. Um, even Twitter, who's been the bastion for you need to have a, an unedited feed, gave up last week and said, we're going to start editing our feed because people simply don't want everything from everyone they follow all the time. I don't know how many of you have personally noticed how much your Facebook feed has actually changed in the last year or two. You know, if you like something from a person now, you will see a lot more of that person in the next couple of days. Um, that has the reverse effect too. If you as a brand keep posting stuff that people don't like, fewer and fewer people are going to see what you post next time. So the way the engagement algorithms also work is that every time you put out something that isn't good, it's going to actually detract from what you're trying to achieve. Uh, and I think that's another very interesting learning. Um, there, are, there are, linking from this, uh, various evidence that point towards how social sharing and social conversation becomes increasingly important in this process. So this is some stats I took from my old video past, but it's, it's a study that looks at the top 100 brands in the world from Interbrand and then looks at how well they're doing in online video. Um, and it turns out that the, the, the top 25 brands in the world do a lot better in terms of social sharing of their video than the, than the bottom 25% of brands. So, in fact, if you look across and do a regression analysis of all the factors, that means that the difference between a top 25 brand and, and a bottom 25 brand in, in the interbrand to 100, mind you, the, the bottom 25 are not small brands. They're still, you know, your Goldman Sachs and your, and your, and your various other companies. Uh, it's simply how much their videos are getting shared on social media. So if you had to look at one factor and determine if a brand is, is going to do well or not in a brand study, uh, you could look at the sharing. Um, 
I think from, to return to the user side, there are two things that become very important. Um, for the first is that users increasingly, because of this overflow of information, increasingly find information via social channels. So more and more of the content that we consume, even though it might be on YouTube or it might be on The Guardian or it might be on other websites, we come across that content via our social channels. And that means we, if we're not part of that social conversation as a brand or don't have content in those channels, we, we may increasingly face not being seen and heard. Um, and it comes back to the second point in which I unfortunately don't have time to, to go into today too much, but it's one of my favorite subjects online. It's, it's known as the filter bubble. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen this TED talk called the filter bubble, uh, a guy called Eli Parisa, who's actually one of the founders of BuzzFeed. Um, he talked about how when these algorithms increasingly look at what you like and give you more of that, then you also increasingly don't see the rest of the world, the world that you don't like. And part of his study points, um, you, you should really see the TED talk, but, but just to give you one idea, he basically gets a bunch of his friends in 2012 to, to search for Egypt and, and see just how different Google search results are. So some people get all about the conflict and the Arab Spring and other people simply get packaged holidays. Because in fact, even if you're not logged into Google, Google used 57 different data points to determine what you should see compared to what other people should see. The idea of an objective Google search result does not exist. Google does not have an objective search result. So Google today could not produce you with a standard Google result. It simply doesn't exist anymore. Um, so what to do now that we're companies and brands? Um, I think there are two simple steps to take, uh, and I'll argue for them today. One is to create quality content. Um, I think th this was my old world of sort of going out to brands and trying to convince them that we're moving from, from advertising to content, that even if we are trying to market ourselves, we need to make stuff that's valuable to people, whether they're patients or, or physicians uh, or, or related groups. And the second is curation, is to make sure we reach the right touch points. I think, you know, multi-channel multi or, or omni-channel, I like the idea of omnichannel. I, I think we need to think of where our users are and make sure that our curation, our, our distribution and curation efforts reach them in those environments. Um, that could be healthcare professionals or it could be patients. Um, I'm going to keep it general for this.